You know about sine, cosine, and tangent, but do you know about their cousins? Stay tuned and we'll talk about it. Hi, I'm Aaron Hayes, a teacher at West Chicago High School. And everybody kind of knows or learned in geometry about sine, cosine, and tangent. There are three cousins that are related to them, so we're going to talk about those and just set us up for the next three units that we're going to be talking about trigonometry. So what that's going to look like is this. Uh, we're going to come back here. And if you remember before, we have sine, cosine, tangent. And like I said, we've got some cousins here. This is pronounced cosecant, technically cosecant theta, because that's the Greek letter that we're using here. This is called secant. Now notice we had sine and cosine, so co and secant, cosine, cosecant and secant kind of have that same um, wording. And then while we have tangent, we are also going to have cotangent. Well, see, everybody's related. It's not that big of a deal, right? So from there, let's talk about the definitions, because if they're related, they're going to end up using the same right triangle. Now, we talked yesterday about making a reference angle, and the reason why we need to make a reference angle is, let's say if we have an angle over here in quadrant two, this angle is obtuse. All of our trig has always been based on the right triangle, which means that we have two acute angles plus the right angle, so we drop this altitude always to the horizontal. So again, we still have our hypotenuse here, we still have our opposite side here, and then we have our adjacent side here, and then we've got this reference angle here. That's going to be used for every for that particular obtuse angle, okay? And so we know we have sine, let's go back and recover those, right? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And cosecant is related to sine, but it's gonna run hypotenuse over opposite. Now don't say they're opposite of each other because they're not. We'll talk about that when we get done with this slide. So cosine, we have adjacent over hypotenuse. So secant is going to be related to cosecant. Or me, not cosecant. It is related to cosecant, but it's going to be related to cosine. This way, hypotenuse over the adjacent side. And then tangent, the last combination, in this order, opposite over adjacent. So cotangent then has to be the reciprocal of that. And I use the term reciprocal because, obviously it is, but that's also going to be how these are related. Tangent and cotangent are reciprocals of each other. Cosecant and secant are reciprocals of each other. Opposite and hypotenuse, or it can be uh, sine and cosecant are going to be reciprocals of each other. That's where it later. Now, how do we use this stuff? This is how we're going to start off with this. Tomorrow, we're going to get a little bit more in-depth if I give you a trig function. But for right now, what we're going to end up doing is I'm going to tell you about an angle. So in this case here, always draw this out. Always draw it out in the proper quadrant. Because if you don't, actually, you know what? Let's do this. Okay. Always draw this out in the proper quadrant. Because if you don't, you're going to get sines mixed up. You're going to get sides mixed up. And right now, we're starting on the basics, so we can go ahead and focus on all the important stuff, okay? So since we're focusing on the basics, don't worry about, oh, okay, yeah, you could do it in your head. Great. We're building muscle memory on this one, okay? So anyway, we're going to sketch this out. 12.5 is in quadrant one. This doesn't have to be perfect, because we're just using it as a... Graphic organizer, let's say. So again, please label your axes. So this length is 12. This is 5. Right angle. This is the angle I have. I don't have to worry about the reference angle because the reference angle and the angle itself are the same in quadrant 1. However, also label this. There's your hypotenuse. There's my opposite side. Here's my adjacent side. And so now it's just right of the six trig functions. Great. Sine theta, and then you're just going to go opposite over hypotenuse. Just what you would know. Oh my goodness, what's my hypotenuse? Please tell me you remember it's a Pythagorean triple. Remember 5, 12, 13? So you got to figure that out. 
Obviously, you could use Pythagorean ident or theorem if you want to. Um, so sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So that means that this is going to be 5 over 13. So if I ask you for your cosecant, so that's going to be reciprocal of it. That's hypotenuse over opposite. So that is going to be 13 over 5. And I would write both of them down because, again, every time you write it down, it gets cemented into your head a little bit better. Not literally, figuratively. Um, cosine theta. Jason over hypotenuse, so that is going to be, oh, you know, that's right, sorry. thought I had a brain cramp there for a second. So that means my secant theta is going to be 13 over 12. Now notice this. You probably have noticed, hopefully, in your geometry and algebra careers, that sine and cosine always have to be less than 1 because hypotenuse is always the longest side. So since we're doing reciprocals, cosecant and secant are always going to be larger than 1. And when we do graphing, that will come back in spades, as they say. Tangent, opposite over adjacent. These can always obviously be bigger than 1. Um, so you have 5 over 12. And then cotangent is going to be 12 over 5. Okay? So again, write out the parts and just get into the habit of so you can write these out correctly. So then when we get to tougher stuff, you don't have to worry about focusing on that. Another example. So this one here, now this one isn't in quadrant one, so this is going to be a setup. Now, we normally don't measure distances negatively. That's more of a vector thing. Welcome to physics and pre-calculus. But in here, we're going to make an exception. So here we're going to do 8, negative 6. 8, negative 6 is somewhere over here. So we're going to draw the side. And remember, we're going to drop the altitude to the horizontal. Pretend you're in Australia, okay? Everything falls up there. So the joke goes. So if you're joining me from Australia, I know, I'm sorry, sort of. So let's figure out these parts. So this is 8, negative 6. So again, this is my angle, my reference angle. Now, technically, the angle that we're talking about starts here and goes all the way around. Or it could be a negative version of that. We don't care about that right now. We're going to just go ahead and say, all right, this is my opposite side. Sorry. This is my adjacent side. Magic, and this is going to be my hypotenuse. So, this is 8. This is going to be negative 6. So I said, and what that is, is that since we're, I mean, I know distances are positive unless we're doing vectors. However, what's going to end up happening is that we're going to use the negative so that we can make sure we get the signs on the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotan uh, cotangent all correct. And then 3, 4, 5, you may remember. There's a Pythagorean triple, so multiples of that, 6, 8, 10. So this side is going to be 10. Hypotenuses are always going to be positive, so don't worry about that. And then we're just going to go through and run it. Sine of theta is going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, opposite is negative 6 over 10. Do you have to reduce it? Yes, because we're not savages, okay? So that means that cosecant, that is an ugly C, Mr. Hayes. It's going to be a negative 5 thirds. Now, again, you could go as 10 over negative 6. The negative, it doesn't matter what part it is, obviously. Cosine is going to be 8 over 10. And we'll reduce that. And obviously, if you can reduce it, the great part is, is that when you go for the cousin function, you don't have to worry about reducing it because you already did. I know, right? And then my tangent, negative 6 eighths. And that's going to be negative three-fourths. Interesting thing here about tangent. If that final side, the slope of this final side is always going to match up the sine of the tangent. So this is a negative slope. So we're going to get a negative tangent. Um, bum, bum, bum. There we go. Yay. Totally amazing, isn't it? Yeah, kind of. All right. One more example, then we're going to let you go off and just try some basics. Here we go. Last one. Ooh, find the six trig functions of the angle. Who goes through this line? And x is going to be greater than zero. Why do we care about that? You'll see in a minute. So, Mr. Hayes, there's not a point. Whatever should we do? Yeah, but we got a line. Tell me more about this line. Remember what I was talking about slope? Slope is rise over a run. Oh, wait, that's y over, that's y over x. Correct. So, if I solve this out, I'm going to get y equals a negative three, oops, three-fifths x. 
So that means that I'm going to have a line running through here. So it's going to be going downhill. Now it says x is positive. So that means that the only place, so I've got two places on this line, obviously, right? I've got where x is negative and where x is positive. So I'm going to take this side. That is where my final side is. So I'm going to go ahead and drop my altitude. Now the slope is negative 3 over 5. Oh, wait, that's rise over run. That's y over x, however you want to do it. So that means that this part's going to be the 3, this part's going to be the 5. Now, which side is negative? That's why it's important to know that x is positive. Because if x is positive, then y has to be your negative. So I get negative 3. Ooh, 3, 5. What's going to be your hypotenuse? Now, this one here, you're going to have to legitimately go through because this isn't anything special. So that's going to be 9 plus 25. So that's going to be square root of 34 squared. So there's my hypotenuse. Always positive, as I said. So hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent. So then we're just going to go ahead and list them out. So again, depending upon how you set things up, we need to rationalize. So like here, my sine of theta is going to be my opposite side over my hypotenuse. Negative 3 over root 34. So yes, we have to rationalize it because... Civilized people don't leave radicals in the denominator. I know, it's so 20th century. And I get that. Okay? Cosine. Same thing. So then I would get, oh, that's going to be 5 over 34. And then you're going to start seeing a trend. Oh, look, I get to rationalize that. Now, um, in terms of the cousin functions, I would recommend a couple of things here. And I'm going to leave you. I'm not going to do all of these because I'm going to trust that you know how to do basic algebra from earlier in the year. But when we're going to do cousin functions, so let me pull out cosecant theta. Okay, You have two choices. I can either take the reciprocal of this or I can take the reciprocal of this. Which one is going to be more advantageous? If I do the first one down here, then that is going to have me go through and do a rationalization that's really kind of crazy. It is much easier to take this one because then, or do it by straight definition, so it's hypotenuse over my opposite, and then you don't have to worry about doing any of the rationalizing that we did before. Okay, so like down over here, cosecant or excuse me, secant of theta is going to equal square root of thirty-four over five. Might as well, I'm sorry, I said I wasn't going to do everything. I might as well finish it out because some of you are probably anxious to double check that you're correct. And we only have two things left, so how hard could it be? Now, the nice thing about these is that we're not going to have to rationalize them because since it's opposite and adjacent, we don't have any opposite. We don't have um, any radicals in them, at least this today. So that's going to become negative three fifths. And then this one again, because it is adjacent over opposite is going to be 5, negative 5 thirds. So anyway, so that is all the cousin functions. We're going to use them for the rest of the year. So while you thought we had three trig functions, we're going to do much more than that. So there's the bell. I got to run to AP Stats. Hope you find this helpful, question mark. And click on some of the links that you see over here. Subscribe, all that other good stuff. Talk to you soon.